Hello and welcome to Runin Seasonal Cup. This will be my analysis for the latest tournament. And as always, I'm going to start by searching through my deck lists and explaining a little bit about the decisions I made. Uh, it is good to note that this was just after the balance patch where things like Husk and Frog Tosser got nerfed um, and all those cards. So we were taken a little bit by surprise with that one. Um, it happened like a week before this tournament, so we didn't have a lot of time to prepare and um, kind of experiment with the meta. So I was kind of predicting that some of the nerfed cards wouldn't be seen as much. I thought Frog Tosser was still very strong. It's still a 3-4. Um, Husk also, I found, was very strong still. So I was kind of expecting to run into some Husk lists. Um, uh, but I was expecting Swarm to be a lot less prevalent because uh, Rakoan Illusionist was nerfed pretty hard. A hey, right click! Welcome! How's it going? Um, and thanks, right click, for uh, streaming the Seasonal Cup and giving your commentary. Saturn was going to do it, but he had some other business, so right click stepped up to the plate. Thank you, thank you. It was a very interesting and fun tournament. I think these matches are going to be really fun to go over as well. Um, especially, like, mostly because of the balance patch. Um, so... Yeah, so my I was kind of expecting also green to pop up. Um, yeah, so I was expecting green to kind of might be a thing because um, Frog Tosser has three attack, Beastmaster is okay to play now, and also um, uh, Seed of Paradise was buffed. So I was expecting maybe someone would bring like a green ramp list. So Yellow Flyer is very strong against green, mono green. Um, so... That was the pick there. It was just your stream, so y'all could hear your dumb voice. Summer was definitely the quality commentator. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> no, we appreciate you, right click. Also, I love the constant commentary. Sometimes, like, Feria streams can get awkward because, like, people are taking a long time with their turns, and you're just off talking about, like, some some casual things. It was good. It was good. Um, yeah, so Yellow Flyers to combat green. It's also just a solid deck anyways. Um, and I wanted something to fight Husk as well. I think Flyers is pretty decent against Husk. It can dump its hand pretty effectively. Um, some of the considerations I made here. It's kind of similar to uh, Super Blizzard's list, but uh, I think there are some minor modifications here. I'm running two Bloat Fly and two Spirit Theft. Often you run one or the other, but... Uh, Bloatfly is really strong. Uh, I felt that I needed more creatures as well, and Spirit Theft can sometimes brick. So I wasn't really comfortable running three Spirit Thefts. Uh, barter, again, you can brick with barters, so two is always the number for me. So there's a lot of two ofs in this list, but you know. Um, and then nine starting creatures, that's pretty much my golden number. Green Blue Jump, I just think is still incredible. One of the top tier decks, even with the Frog Tosser nerf. Um, so this is the list that I pretty much bring every tournament. I was considering bringing Frogify instead of Humbling um, to fight like Monstrosity or uh, Carassius, because I I predicted Monstrosity was going to be one of the most popular decks in this tournament, because it hasn't been nerfed. It's still a really incredibly strong list, maybe like one of the best. Um, so Monstrosity I was a little bit spooked of, because I didn't have... a fantastic lineup to fight it. Um, so yeah, there was a consideration for Frogify. Crastius, I wasn't expecting to see a lot of, but I was expecting maybe like one or two people would bring it, so I was considering Frogify, but Humbling is just a lot quicker to get out. Uh, and then Beastmaster. Um, again, this is a list I bring a lot. Actually, I was debating... What was I going to bring? I was debating bringing a green-blue beasts list, but um, because of the Frog Tosser nerf, I didn't really want to include Frog Tosser in the beast list anymore. It was kind of just splashed in there because Frog Tosser was OP. But I didn't have enough testing time to get my be my uh, green blue beasts. Sorry, I didn't have enough testing time to get my green blue beasts list um, functioning the way that I was happy with it. So I, I threw in Beastmaster because 
I, I, I know and love this list. I've played with it a lot, so I was super comfortable with it. Um, I play this a lot defense, a lot more defensively than other players, I think. There's no teleports, no mobility whatsoever. It's completely just defensive deck. You turtle at your base and just hope that you get off uh, big enough creatures to win, and then you kind of walk your creatures up. Um, and then Eel Husk is a unique one. I really haven't had much testing with this. Um, I'm going to play this later today uh, at the end of this stream, but um, this list is kind of like uh, the Eel list that I built a long time ago. I think I made a guide video for it even, kind of based on Amoeba's list, but... Um, a lot of it is geared towards fighting Husk, because... Like hey! <laughs> hey, Andy. How's it going? I'd love some tea, actually. Um, yeah, so this one was kind of... Just because Husk was still OP, um, I broke my vow of not playing Husk anymore, because, you know, it was nerfed. I was like, ah, oh, I'll try it out. Um, and yeah, so this has, like, very little deck weight. as a 2.8 cost. But it does have ways to get deck weight with those Spirit Thefts and the Ariana, kind of similar to the Yellow Flyers. Um, and then the, the Spite Sprites are there, it's like a cheap early collector. So I can use all of the cards that the Husk player gives me uh, pretty efficiently. Um, it is a very, very control style list. Actually, I think I renamed this to Eel Control instead of Eel Husk, but here it is. That's the screenshot I got. Um, but yeah, very control-like, uh, not very good against mono green, but this is kind of just to counter uh, Husk. Also Flyers, um, because of all the control tools, and Thunder Eels, decent against Flyers as well. Um, but alright, let's take a look at the matches. So, uh, I had a buy in the first round. So how Seasonal Cup works is... Um, all of your FWC points get tallied up, and it's not randomly seeded like open tournaments are. Um, you'll go to the top of the bracket if you have the most amount of FWC points, and you know you get like listed down and down for depend. You're ranked based on your number of FWC points, and uh, so the first few people will most likely get buys. It just depends how many people are participating. So I got a buy. This is round eight against Stinky, who brought Crassius. There it is. And so my plan here, I didn't bring any Crassius um, counters. So my plan was just to ban the Crassius straight up if I, if I, if I ran into it. I wasn't expecting to see a lot of players running it, but I was expecting some players to bring it, so... There was just an auto ban here, and then the rest of my lineup was just pretty solid against everything else. The only thing I was a little bit spooked of was Cheese, if he brought both Krog and Crassius, because then I'd have to ban Crassius, and I'd have to fight Krog. And, um... I don't have the best lineup for fighting Krog. I could, like, rush with Beastmaster and maybe Green-Blue Jump, but they're a little bit slower. Flyers is okay, but yeah, so anyways, with Stinky, um, I was, um, so this one is Monstrosity, which is the spookiest deck here, so I have to kind of plan out how I'm going to fight this list, um, and what do I got? So, um, honestly, like, my lineup's pretty not that great against Monstrosity. Like, Flyers could do okay, maybe. Eel Control is, like, not really the best. But it does have removal tools, so I think this would be okay. My green-blue jump's very swarmy. Um, so I often use this to fight, like, Flyer-types matchups. Rakoan's died for this. <laughs> uh, yes. We'd like to see some more uh, Crassius. I mean, we wouldn't like to see Crassius. Get it out of here. Um, and there's, so there's, okay, so what am I planning here? So we've got, I need to fight blue, I need to fight red, yellow, burn. Um, so these two green lists, I might as well uh, keep for the burn. 
these are like my my best bet for fighting this. Honestly, the green blue jump is like my only bet of fighting this. Beastmaster is like okay. Um, so I start with flyers. It's just kind of a solid scouting deck. We go against his blue list. Um, I could have started with Beastmaster also. I think Beastmaster is pretty weak to all of the. Oh well, yeah, Beastmaster was weak against like two out of his three decks. It would have been okay against the burn. Um, so Beastmaster might have honestly been a better scouting deck, but we started with the yellow. Uh, this hand is, like, godly, though. Uh, so let's just skip ahead to some action. Alright, so, yeah, we just get to double collect immediately. Stinky building double neutrals, so he really wants to fight those flyers. Um, this is super awkward into yellow, because, like, he's, these buffs kind of are pointless. Like, all of my guys are 5 attacks, so I can deal with these guys. Uh, so I soul drain this. I think I'm just gonna retreat. Well, I wanna, I wanna produce the Manta Rider as well on this left side to kind of reinforce it, so I guess I'm not retreating. Um, but I don't, I, I wanna make him build these double neutrals if he wants to kill anything. Um, it just kind of makes it awkward for him, because he wants to produce a lake for his Mystic Beast. Um, so that's also why I don't want to build the desert here, but I'm thinking of building the desert here next, so that I block his Mystic Beast spot. So he goes for double neutrals again, playing out of like movement range. Um, so that's fair enough. Top deck the bloat fly, which is pretty nice. Pretty nice. This like blue struggles a lot with yellow because I can just get this flyer over here, and they have no easy answers to it. Like he's got to invest double neutral plus a ninja toad in the future if he wants to kill this. So I just get to double collect it like for the rest of the game, uh, while I just pool all the rest of my resources on left side. So I want to protect this bloat fly now. Um, I did build this land, blocking the Mystic Beast spot. Oh, I don't actually play Bloatfly. Fair enough, yeah. I mean, it's in tower range, so Bloatfly is pretty vulnerable here. Um, it does have to come down at some point, though. I feel like... Yeah, I guess I don't want to play into tower range. Fair enough. <clears throat> so there's the Mystic Beast, but thankfully it's one tile back. We've got these defensive deserts going up here. Um, and he's out of range, so the fact that he's playing out of range of things means that um, it's it's really awkward for him to come in here. And like the longer I get to collect, double collect on this side, the more like resources I get to use against him. So this is pretty nice. I get to keep my manta alive. I didn't want the 2-2 to spawn there particularly, because it doesn't trade very nicely into these guys. Um, this also lets me drop the bloat flies now, especially with two of them. I just get to drop them, and uh, they're pretty safe. Like, one of them will die, maybe, but... Uh, so what? He used a humbling here, which is just so expensive. So pretty much in this early game, I, I sealed the game with this with this demon wing. So let's skip ahead. Um, yeah, and then, so because of this double collector, I'm just able to completely just dump resources left side, control the board. Now I've got Ariana going, so I've got like an infinite uh, well of resources. So we win this match. Uh, so next is Red Yellow Burn. So this one is a little bit spooky uh, for Flyers. I, I don't have the luxury of just going to both sides of the wells casually collecting. I really have to push hard this game. 
And so that's what I do. I just am going to go down one side of the walls. I could have put this explorer on the side instead because this gives him a land to step on in the future. <clears throat> I could have easily just put the desert here, build my lands up like that. Um, but flyers are really awesome because you don't have to invest the lands into the collection spots. You can put the land here and then you can just do whatever you want with your other lands because they can just fly over and collect. So, going to put on a ton of pressure, even going to use the flash wind here to gain some, gain that 5 hit. I'm trying to apply as much damage as possible, because once those scourge flames come down, I'm pretty screwed. Um, so he finds a training to go back, clear the manta, which is... Pretty fine. Uh, I think I'm just going to barter for Flame Burst here if I can find it, which I don't. That's actually pretty unfortunate. Um, I'm just going to have to take the Cypher's Wrath and do a Soul Drain Wrath, which is a little bit more expensive than I was hoping for, but that's okay. Uh, we put Emissary here because it's just better. If you ever have a creature a aside from Ariana, you always play the other creature pretty much. Because Ariana's just... Uh, bad. <laughs> like, Ariana's only there if you need the extra resources, because Flyers can run out of cards, as you see here. So, like, you only play Ariana if you've got nothing else to play, really. Uh, or or if you're like close to getting a treasure cuz the treasures don't really matter that much they're they're way too expensive to make that your game plan um you always just play the other body uh so like here i've got demon wing like it's literally cheaper and costs one attack but uh, i have enough feria for both anyways um so yeah that's i think he actually like Almost gets something. He's gotten... Yeah, he gets to drop, he gets to drop two Scourge Flame here, but... You know, yeah, now he's got to kind of deal with his face. So he finds double Scourge Flame, but... Yeah, not going to be quite enough. Alright, so... Game 3... Flyers did so well this 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 tournament. Flyers has been insane. Um, so now it's the monstrosity deck. And this is the spooky one. Um, kind of an awkward hand here too. I just full scoop. And then I draw into crap. <laughs> so that's not good to see. Um, I could have kept the Manta Rider, but I was going second, so... I don't know, a three desert card going second isn't the best. And, like, I've got nine starting creatures. It's pretty likely that I top deck one, but didn't quite get one here. Um, so let's jump ahead. <laughs> it's a really bad hand for me. I don't think I find a creature until turn four with the bloat fly there. Yeah, so Stinky is free to just drop all these creatures to collect. He's double collecting already. Uh, he's got, he's triple collecting with triple mantas. I mean, uh, mistral guides. Uh, so literally all I can do here is, like, kind of stall. So, yeah, okay. I've got creatures now. So I'm gonna clear the right side. I need to establish some collection of my own here. There's no way that I can possibly fight him anymore. Um, and this is honestly a mistake, I think. So I put the manta rider here to fight, but... This is so vulnerable to Wind Soldier. I, I, I was actually debating putting the tower on the Explorer tile just to like block the Wind Soldier line um, from double collecting, but I didn't want to give away my answers. He does find it, and yeah, I should have just put the Manta on, on right side. I think I gave a ridiculously long and unnecessary speech at the last of your matches for Stinky. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't remember. The audio was a little bit messed up for some reason. Like, you, your voice was speaking from the past, but Summers was speaking from the present. I, I don't under, I don't know why. Like, during the tournament, I'm pretty sure that, that wasn't happening, but on the recording, for whatever reason, 
It was working that way. Yeah, so this is super awkward. Um, I should have just put the Manta Rider on right side. Established some good, solid co co yeah, collections. But nope. Um, we do have two champions, which could sneak out a win for me. Champion's pretty nice. Um, so I'm just going to try and get my collections in here. Develop that champion so I can uh, move it around. Provide a threat. Yeah, I don't even know how that how that happened. <laughs> that was that was strange. So okay, so he's gonna clear the champion. He's got training and then movement. It's a little bit expensive. But it's probably worth it. I mean, champion's quite devastating on the board, especially um, when you're not able to protect the other 4-4, four four, so I think it's reasonable. <clears throat> um, this guy in trade range, th actually, I think he has an answer. I don't think he'd put that in trade range otherwise. Um... Oh, and he has the monstrosity, yeah, so this is just, like, winning line right here. Yeah, so that was completely fair. Um, and the soul drain. Perfect turn. Full clear. It's got all this stuff. I think I just kind of play fast here for time and such. Great. Put my monstrosity down, but it really doesn't matter. Um, he even finds the, the clear for it, so... Yeah. This game's a loss. Um, and now I've got to try and fight this monstrosity list. So I use my green-blue jump. Um, this is the list that I'm thinking is going to be the one to beat it. Uh, it's a little bit slow, but it's swarmy. So hang on to this. Octopus is kind of nice to fight some stuff. Like, as a 3-7, he can take out two creatures, usually. Uh, let's jump ahead. Um, and, th like, this hand is looking pretty solid. I've got the Tide Lord in hand, two Octopuses to kind of fight stuff with. Um, I just kind of have to get lucky that he doesn't draw into any monstrosities or anything. Let's find some music to play. I should have opened up some music. Mm. Too loud. <clears throat> Alright, so yeah, we put the octopus here. Um, I'm gonna shimmy these guys around, so I got the three attack thing to fight into the manta. Um, this is just gonna be a much better clear, and then I can clear up the little baby manta with the two attack. Um, unless he has movement, but that's pretty fine. So this kind of covers all of my all of my my weak points. Um, Soul drain would kind of suck, but I mean, if it, if he has it, he has it. Um, so we're blocking his double collection, kind of. So he does find the soul drain, clears that off, goes for the collection anyways. Okay, I guess because he's playing the demon. Fair enough. And the monstrosity, so I really didn't want to see the monstrosity this early. I mean, it's not even that early. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a little bit awkward. So what's the play here? 
pretty much this is going to be really tough. I need to get this Tide Lord out. Um, it's a pretty aggressive body that can fight stuff and hopefully hunt down this monstrosity at some point. But honestly, like, the only way that I can ever kill this is either Frog Tosser, like, it's Frog Tosser plus stuff, or uh, the Sunken Tower, which I'm only running one of, so it's going to be really, really tough to hunt these down. Um, so, so the other option is just to put on face pressure, but now that he's got this out, like, he's just going to gain so much attack and it's a huge threat to my face. <clears throat> so, I'm debating hiding here. Uh, and doing what? Yeah, I start roping this. It's hard to know, really. Double neutrals. Okay, fair enough. Right, I forgot about that, actually. I got the uh, Triton Trainer buff. So it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, it's just really awkward no matter where I put it. So I, I wanted to play out of range of the... Uh, the demon. I think my plan here is going to be to just hope that I can get a jumper to face and use the buffs on him. So there was an option to go to the left, clear his collection here, and then pre-buff to uh, stay out of range of the... or be able to kill the uh, demon there. But I think I'm kind of trying to shift my game plan towards praying that a big jumper can kill him. Um, this list typically doesn't run Last Nightmare. So if I can get a massively buffed jumper at his face, then I might have a decent chance. Uh, he finds Flash Wind, which is a little unfortunate. Um, but this might help me even, because he's a little bit far back from my face now, right? So this does two damage to him every turn. Uh, so... If I can get this to just live one more turn, like, an extra 4 damage to face is pretty nice. And here's another buff, so my game plan might be okay. So the line that I see here that's really the only line is hopping, killing with the 4-4, um, the, the four four, and then we're going to use the 7-7 seven seven to try and go face it, just mega buff it. Um, there is the monstrosity here, but, you know, that's pretty much my only line that I'm forced into now. Uh, so that's what I do. We go forced up. We kill with the 4-4. Four four. I'm almost in range of being one shot here, though. Um, but I can't really play around that too much. So I put the toad out of range of the demon. Uh, I mean, that's good for a number of reasons, like... Uh, it means that he can't kill his demon off and make this 15 and, like, 20 very easily, 20 attack. Um, but also I want to deal that 2 extra damage to him, which might matter. Um, do a pre-buff there. Again, there's no nightmare, so I just need to kind of buff this out of, like, conceivable range of him being able to kill into it. Um, and if he does, like, some sort of movement trick to move the monstrosity to kill this, then it was expensive for me, but it's honestly fine. Like, I, I need, I either need an answer to this, or I need to kill him. Those are my only two options. So, he's stepping his guys forward... Um, two mobility checks wins in the game here, but that's quite a lot. He's already used, like, mm, I can't remember, at least one or two. Uh, there's another one, there's a flash wind. Um, so at least the flash wind's been used up. And I don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, this is a little spooky, though, having the extra monstrosity here, because now he's got, like, ways to kill this, which kind of sucks. Um, so the Sunken Terror pickup's huge here, actually. Um, and the idea I want to use with this, I want to use it to block this monstrosity's line. He's only on one card, so there's not a lot 
that he can use to get to my face. Um, so I can use the Sunken Tower to block. I just have to get this Tide Lord safe, which there are many places for, but you know. <clears throat> so I draw. Actually, I think it would have been better. So I, I just realized this, but instead of the draw, I should have done a double neutral here to hit face and then Sunken Terror this guy away and then he wouldn't wouldn't be able to hit into the Tide Lord because Tide Lord would be on this space. Um, I think I was just trying to top deck more buffs but it would have been so much better just to keep this guy safe um, and I might have snuck out a win with that honestly. Actually maybe not. Um, so here I'm a little bit worried about him, like I could put the Sunken Terror here, but then he can just potentially skirt around it. I know he's on one card, but I mean it's pretty easy for this deck to find some mobility. But we're going to do this line. I'm going to move it so that he's forced to build the land, if he wants to hit into this at least. So that's something. Uh, and then we put a taunt here. Um, so, I, so this was another debate. I could have made it a 5-3 taunt, which honestly was probably what I should have done. I was just worried about uh, Wind Soldier, because what he could have done... He's got two cards. I mean, they have to line up very specifically, but like he could move down... Oh, sorry. Can he even clear, clear this if it's 5-3? I mean, like he moves down, he drops the desert, he Wind Soldiers, and then... He just kills me next turn, I guess. Um, I guess that's what I was worried about, but like in this position, I, I, I have to kind of take risks. I can't really be doing something like this. Should definitely be a 5 3. Because, um, like, he, kill, he kills this with something, and then I've got no more answers anymore. Um, but he does have to find an answer to the Tide Lord. Which, I mean, there's an answer on board here because of the monstrosity being still in range. Like, I really should have just put the Tide Lord over here. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, he finds the perfect answer anyways. <laughs> which is super sad. So he doesn't even need to use his monstrosity. So, like... Oh, he just got perfect top decks this game. Um, and this was really good for him moving both in range of face. So now I've got to deal with both of these. Unfortunately, this is not a 5-3. Um, and see, this would have been so much better as a 5-3 because even if he had the Wind Soldier, it means he wouldn't be able to clear the Tide Lord. Uh, so I might have been able to win this one. Um, like, there's... Okay. Oh, right, okay, this was the line I was worried about. He could go down, he could Desert, Wind Soldier, and then Flash Wind. Those could be the two cards in his hand, or just any movement trick, which was honestly kind of likely. I mean, there's a lot of movement tricks in this list, and um, he'd only played one Wind Soldier at that point, I think. Or maybe not at all, even. I don't remember. But yeah, now that I don't have a 5-3, it's super awkward. I almost have the clear here. I need 5 Varia because I have to build this land. Humbling. Uh, clear, and then I've got the buff, but... Don't quite have enough Varia. Um, so I mean, I go for the line that doesn't kill me, but... The only card that saves me here now is Frog Tosser. Um, that's the only thing that I can hope for. And it has to be a top deck so I can plus one into it. So he's got two life. And I top deck it! <laughs> yeah, so you have like, ah. Uh. But that's okay. Happens. Yeah, I think that, uh... If that was a 5-3, I would have been able to answer... Um... Those guys a lot better. <laughs> 
But okay, so now I'm Beastmaster versus Monstrosity. This is gonna be such a tough one, but it was a really interesting match. <clears throat> For Fairy of Frog Toss or when? <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Frog toss are too much. Yeah, the three four. I I like the I like the nerf. I think that is a pretty great nerf as it is. Um, it doesn't like it's it's still really strong. Five faria to produce two creatures. Um, like even if you kill like a two faria thing, like I mean, you produce two creatures and deal three damage. That's absolutely insane. Um, so I get Arid in here. Um, like I've done in the past, I start with the center for us so that I can fight his side with the Arid in. Um, but I mean, it's pretty difficult to kind of hunt down his flying creatures when my guy needs the lands. Yeah. Yeah, the Frog Tester nerf was very solid. Um, this is just a god start for Stinky again, <laughs> but I, I drew the perfect top deck. Uh, like being able to shoot the double collector here is insane because I'm just, like I'm super slow. There's no way that I can fight all of this at once. But Emperor's Command saved me huge here. Um, so I'm just gonna continue stepping up. There was an option to double neutral here. So I wouldn't have to build the land so much. Um, that was a debate. Considering I have no five forest cards in my hand either, but... Still didn't get the illusionist though. Yeah, the, the illusionist nerf was something. But honestly, I'm happy that it's just removed from the game. <laughs> illusionist was just way too fun. I mean, way too uh, strong. Um, so Stinky actually goes face here, which is interesting. Uh, I think it's... I mean, I guess I am green if you wait... Well, I don't know. Honestly, like, he just wins if he builds up big uh, monstrosity, really. Um, so this turn is super awkward, though, now. Um, because I need to defend this. I can't be taking five next turn. So I want to produce this Grove Guardian to fight. Um, so I debate between putting it on the neutral because this would allow me to collect. Um, but putting it here means that he can't use a mobility trick to run away and collect safely. So I felt this was the better spot. Um, and then I'm debating going down to collect, but I mean... I really need this to threaten this and, you know. Um, there's also something to be said about uh, the fact that he's not collecting anymore since he decided to go face. But I mean, he's on 8 Varia, like... It probably doesn't matter too much. Um, so yeah, this is super awkward for me. That double neutral next last turn would have paid off huge, actually. Uh, this is a big, big mistake from Stinky, though. He plays Monstrosity. Um, like, in range of my forests. <clears throat> I guess that's, like, it's okay, but now I get to lock him down with taunts and such. Uh, I mean, this was also a mistake. Stepping forward into trade range. Uh, like, I was, ex I was not expecting him to step up there. I, I was expecting that I would have to wait a couple more turns, but now I've got this ancient boar at a f nice juicy 5 attack. To handle this um, guy. So I, I kind of burn my Willow here. He just kind of gets sacrificed, but I think that it's worth the three Faria just to kill the monstrosity. Like, a monstrosity is so devastating, and I have zero answers for it. I have zero teleports, so I need to lock this down, even though it's eight Faria removal. <laughs> I mean, sorry, six Faria. That's honestly, that's honestly fine. Six Faria removal. But two cards also. That's... Yeah. Um, 
But I top decked the Stalker, which is pretty huge. <laughs> because I was gonna have to trade into this, lose my creature, and then I can't even play my 5 costs. Face was not the place, yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm at my 5 count, we're gonna build the neutrals. I just have to decide where I want to put the other neutral. And I mean, the reasonable spot is up here, up to getting into face range. So, this for one, this threatens the teleport from me. Stinky doesn't know that I don't run teleports in this list. Um, so this might make him a bit scared of like blocking this tile, wasting a creature to block it. Uh, but it also gives me just an aggressive line for the future to drop stuff. <clears throat> Um, and pretty huge here now that I get this board to just collect for me. I finally have collections on board, which I, like, I think I've collected once this entire game so far, apart from that boar. So he drops the ghoul, he kind of just feeds me the ghoul for free, which is interesting. Um, but I do top deck the Stalker, so, like, him dropping this kind of makes me think that there's a Wind Soldier, maybe. Uh, I want to keep this Ancient Born nice and healthy. Because he's, he, like, this collection is super important for me this game. Um, a lot of my cards are 5 costs. So if I can do a plus 1 each turn and drop a 5 cost each turn, uh, I might be able to come back back in this game. So we dropped the Stalker. There's not really a great place for the Stalker, so I just put it in range of the Manta to kind of fight him a bit. Um, I guess I could have put it on right side as well, just to like guarantee my collections here, but uh, the Ancient Boar is like almost definitely surviving. Um, and if I can kill this before another monstrosity comes down, then that might be okay too. Um, but he just finds Soul Drain. Uh, I top deck feed, which is huge. It means I get to feed the Oakling. There's only the Oakling to target here, but uh, now I get to drop big, aggressive Oakling here. So there is zero point in defending with this. Um, I'm going to lose this game like 100% if I don't go face here. Uh, he, like he's triple collecting, but I can't do anything about that. There's no point in attempting to fight that. So we just go face uh, and hope to win with big boys. The same game plan pretty much as the, the green-blue jump. Like we just put big stuff at his face. Uh, there's no nightmare so we just kind of hope that we can kill him. Um, at the moment this is out of range of both of these which is super solid too. Um, but he finds an answer Although really expensive, and no monstrosity on the board, thank god. If there was monstrosity here, I would have lost, but... Um, thank god for no monstrosity, because he has to waste all of these tools just to kill the Oakling. And I do lose the Oakling buff, because I have no creatures in hand, no green creatures for the Oakling to buff. Um, but that's absolutely fine, I will take that. I just ate up two Wind Soldiers and an Emissary from him. Uh, and top deck the Tyrion Golem. So now there's... is pretty unlikely that he finds any answers uh, for this Tyrion Golem. Since we saw the double Wind Soldier, he's only on two cards now. Um, I actually don't know if there's any answers really, unless he finds like Training Flashwind, I guess. But now because I'm dropping these big things, uh, Stinky's got a use all his resources to fight this, which means he's not using those resources to go face, um, and he's not using those resources to develop monstrosity either. So I should be able to win from this position, as long as I keep top decking big things to just drop at his face. Um, Stinky's at a fairy account now where uh, he's not going to be able to deal with me anymore. Um, and I Top deck Voice of Truth, which is equivalent to a big boy, especially since 
he pre-hit into this. He wanted to pre-hit because um, then he gets the extra 2 damage on the Manta, but... Oh, right, I just top deck Grove Guardian. So we save the Voice of Truth in our back pocket, but... Um, Voice of Truth is definitely coming down on this Tyrion Golem when I have the chance. But the taunt certainly helps there. Makes it really awkward for him. He finds the third Wind Soldier though. <laughs> but um, that's fantastic. Um, so I might even debate... Well, I'm going to do a Willow Feed here for sure. But I might even debate like blocking my face. I am at 15 life, so... Uh, but the Tyrion Golem makes a huge difference here though because I'm on 8 Feria so now I can plus 1 drop both right at his face and then that should seal the deal. Um, and also to mention I think like one of the most of the previous turns I wasn't stepping on the desert um, because Stinky had to like invest all of his resources here to fight me I knew that he couldn't drop an aggressive creature, so I wanted to save that Bora step until it actually mattered where he could drop an aggressive creature. Um, I mean, honestly, Stinky's game plan here should probably just be going face, to be honest. There's no way that he's going to keep up with this. But, yeah. So we sneak out the win. That was a super intense series. Thanks for the matches, Stinky. And we're on to Martis. Um, so this is semi-finals. Mardis brought just a solid, I mean, the standard lineup here. One of every color. And there's the green, so I definitely don't want to ban green. Um, because I've got the, well... Yeah, I've got counters to green. Um, although I click on it anyways. I guess because it's, it looks like green ramp because it's like a 5.4 cost. It's pretty pricey. So if he bans my flyers... It's actually going to be pretty difficult to deal with. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but I switched my selection to yellow because, again, that could be monstrosity. Um, and I don't want to... Like, th that's one of my worst decks to fight, to be honest. He bans my red-yellow. I never actually got to play this list. <laughs> um, I just kind of got banned every time. Nobody likes the red-yellow. I mean, Red Yellow Husk is just so obnoxious. Um, so here... So for the green, I want to make sure that I reserve my flyers to fight green. Um, Green-blue is pretty good against blue and the red, so I start with Beastmaster. Um, just as the scouting deck. Uh, Beastmaster is like kind of 50-50 against a mono-blue, but usually mono-blue can, can win that matchup. Okay, maybe not 50-50 then, like, like 60-40. <clears throat> um, so yeah, we save these two decks in reserve for fighting the other ones. Um, and I get super, super lucky here. Marta starts with his red list, which is just Beastmaster's hard counter. Uh, sorry, red is... Beastmaster hard counter is red, so... Um, this might have even determ uh, like determined the series right here, to be honest. Red does not have a good time against green. So let's skip through a little bit. Um, just with green against red, you just build a defensive setup. Um, I build the neutrals here to try and get like maybe the a bit more aggressive of a forest because I'm on almost five lands. Um, and I don't need the Tyrion golems just yet. But he actually drops Baldurion here, which I was a bit surprised by. I was like, oh, he just built five mountains and dropped a Baldurion. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> um, don't often see Baldurion in like a mono red. Uh, so now I kind of got to overwrite this to protect. I don't want him to corrupt, so we use the golem to block. No need to play anything else, can just save up my Faria. He does have 15 Faria, so I was a little bit worried now that he's actually playing Meteor. So I was like, 
Oh my god, he's building five lands. He's got to be playing Meteor. Um, no Meteor, but there's a Firestorm. A lot less devastating. <laughs> Uh, he actually finds answers to, like, everything here. There's the Flame Burst. Uh, I guess I work Helicopter. Does kill off my Oakling, though, which means I get the buffs. Uh, and then Cypher's Wrath. Yeah, he, he just kills everything with that 15 Fairy. I guess the Hammer. Um, so, this isn't a card that you normally fight against, but now that he's got Hammer in hand, um, I'm going to have to push pretty aggressive. Um, although, uh, I think I do double neutral here, which is kind of a mistake. It doesn't really accomplish anything. I dropped that Oakling buffed Tyrion Golem now. Um, so I do this to try and, like, get an aggressive forest, but what I didn't, what I realized after is that I have this Ancient Boar in hand, and this Bulgarian's gonna step forwards anyways. He's not doing anything on this spot, obviously. Um, so if I want the aggressive forest, I can literally just dash the boar from this forest and then drop aggressive forest. Uh, like this double neutral was pretty much a waste. I could have drawn a card there instead. Um, but yeah, re I mean rest of the match pretty much turns out how you would think. And then I do that line next turn anyways. We dash the boar, drop the aggressive forest. Um, clear off Baldurion. So, yeah, I mean, we'll skip through this, because, I mean, it's just... At this point, it's just green versus red, and green just... just trumps. <laughs> um, the, the, the hammer does help a lot, though. The hammer can help... Martus here, like, come back on board, but... Um, I do manage to get the Beastmaster, and I think we get into double collection, even. Like, I start sneaking my way over to double collection with the Willow. Um, and yeah, this is actually quite a long and grindy match. Uh, just because of the hammer and, like, he's able to keep dropping these things and, like, the, the three fairy of five damage efficiency. So it did take a, a while, but, uh, I mean, green versus red. Not much to expect there. So that match is out of the way. This was like the matchup that I wanted my Beastmaster to face. Now Beastmaster's done this job, it can lose. I don't even care. <laughs> um, uh, we can use it now to scout out this green ramp list that he's got. See what cards he's running. Uh, we got the Beastmaster start, which is actually pretty promising. Um, I might be able to get some solid picks there. But then I get Arid in here also. So, this is interesting. I think what I should have done in this matchup is just push one side. Because he is the greedier list. Um, but I was kind of thinking, oh, I've got Beastmaster, maybe this greed can sustain me. But, I mean, if he gets, if he finds a tree of Everlife in the future, I have no way of dealing with it. Um, so if you're in a greed versus greed matchup, the greedier deck always wins. Um, and in that in that case, I should be just pushing up one side, trying to apply pressure. Uh, that's pretty much my way of winning this. But I go for the Aridin in hopes of like trying to get to kill him off, but. Clears off my Beastmaster. I do have two Feed the Forest, so Feed the Forest can come down on this in the future also. Uh, so I just go for a random uh, Time of Legends here, and I managed to get Iona, which is actually insane. This is one of the best cards for fighting green, mono green, because they can't touch her. Uh, unless they've got um, uh, Emperor's Command. So if you don't know Fight, like from Deepwood Stalker, Fight counts as attacking, so uh, Deepwood Stalker can't even kill Iona. Um, so I can use this now on right side to just defend, and I can put all my resources left side while Iona tries and just blocks and slows his advance. Uh, we're just going to kind of double collect with the Aridin. 
he gets insanely lucky forest pings actually forest forest shooting right down here so I'm a little worried about this um, I could step up and try and block his collection but I want to make sure that I'm not opening up a spot hey <laughs> jeez I own a best oh Babster that was Babster <laughs> Oh, yuck, double spider stops any advances. Yeah, the Beastmaster dying there really sucked. That was, like, kind of my game plan by going to both sides. Uh, instead of going down one side and, like, Beastmaster was my greed. That was kind of my win condition, but... You are tiny. Yeah. <laughs> Iona was pretty crazy from that. Didn't quite save me, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, I just I just straight up feed that guy. We get Oakling feed now. Unfortunately, my lands are a little bit far back. Um, so it's going to be kind of difficult to advance. Um, but this Iona is going to put in some work. So we're just going to keep her there, and she's going to be just a big pain for Mardis to deal with. Uh, I guess a Primeval Colossus, which is a little bit spooky. Can't really deal with that. Um, get a Tyrion Golem. So I think here I'm just double neutraling. Um... And I want to clear off this taunt. I really need to get to his face as fast as possible. Because um, race is on now. There's there's no way that I can defend this. So I now have to race him. So I use that command to kind of clean up the willow. But you should have played golem this turn defensive. Uh, I don't... I don't know. I think with the full race, maybe... It's debatable, but I mean, like, I can just step this Iona back to block, and he only has one path of attack here. He's got to build the land, which he wants to do anyways, but... Um, next turn I can drop another creature, and he's only got this one singular line of attack. I don't know, it could have been an option to defend, to be honest, because it takes two turns for him to hack through the golem. So can golem left? Well, I don't think golem left would do anything. Um, like, the golem would have to go here, or else it, it's just pointless. It doesn't do anything. Uh, but then that would slow me down. Yeah, actually, I like the way that I did it. Because I would have to build the forest for this golem to do anything useful. Uh, and then I'm not advancing anymore, so... It doesn't really accomplish anything. Um, but next turn I can drop the... Uh, I can just drop, like, Voice of Truth or something. Actually, I think this got the Oakling buff, but... Yeah. Suck with mono green, so all ears. <laughs> it, mono green, just like the thing is, is this is against um, a greedier mono green list. Like if I keep defending, like he just wins because his his stats are better than mine. So like I, I'm really forced to race here. I could have set up like something more defensive. It, er, on earlier turns, but now it's too late. Um, so I need to produce the forest here, unfortunately, to get this Tyrion Golem down. Um, I can produce a lot of stuff here, though. Um, by building the forest, doing the boar dash, hitting face, and then drop another thing. This taunt is super annoying, though, because I'm going to have to deal with this. Um, and then I think I can just dump my hand here, yeah. So one creature has to come here just to kind of block his double attack, but... Um, so, I mean... We literally just put the, 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 the bigger thing up face. Um, and Voice of Truth the Willow, because we got nothing else. Uh, 
And then I step on the forest just to block taunts. I, I, there's no point in collections anymore, of course. Um, I'm on a two turn clock here. So the only way I survive, like, like on board, he already has like ways to stop me. He just has to taunt one guy and then I, I, I'm one short of lethal. So, oh, that's another thing also. Stepping up the willow might give me a lethal if I top deck feed or something. His list runs three guidance. Oh, okay. Yeah, he might even find a heal here. Uh, it is pretty bleak. <laughs> I also have, like, if I find one heal, then I can survive, but... Oh, I can't survive anymore. Yeah, so that's a heal. Um, so... It's over. Um, but yeah... So I think, like, the mistake that game was literally just the the early game of putting the Beastmaster, or like, like splitting my lands. I should have just went up one side, and I might have had a better chance. Uh, that could be debatable also, but... Um, I was feeling confident with the Beastmaster going double sides, but uh, he just found an answer. Um... Yeah, so I picked the Flyers to counter. This is the counter deck to Mono Green, so... Remember last time you went one side, Lizard said go both sides? Now you want to go both sides. One side was better. Well, yeah, Lizard was saying that against the, the Husk match that I had, which was pretty fair. Um, cause husk, against husk things you want to, like, maintain your collections and stuff. Um, but if you're against a list that's just gonna beat you in the late game, you gotta push down one side. Um, so Celestial Terror is pretty huge here. I have a really nice trade into this, this guy. And I top decked Iona again, so now Iona can just, uh, again, stall on right side, block all of his stuff. Celestial Tower is just such a good card <laughs> in Flyers. I love it. That's why I'm running two copies. He drops Rune in. Um, but yeah, now I get to value trade with the Celestial Tower. Celestial Tower is almost GG here. It's not like green can come back. Yeah. I mean, green is already at quite a disadvantage, so... Uh... That, that's pretty game-winning right there. Actually, a Celestial Tower, like, single-handedly has won me the game, like, two games this tournament, at least. Um, yeah, so I mean, there's not much point in watching this. Pretty much just yellow does yellow things. Um... There was one, like, maybe consideration with the rune in here, like, uh, not really consideration, but, like, if you're a new player, uh, like, a lot of new players like to, are, are, like, afraid of the rune in and hit into it and such, but, um, like, you want to try and keep rune in alive as much as possible because it's really difficult for them to replay rune in. She's really expensive. Um, so, he, like, here I could have, I think I could have gone face with both creatures, but I'm forcing him to build the land here. I opt for that, but, um, honestly, I think hitting with both creatures was fine there. Because now he gets to set up a creature to block, but anyways. It, I've got a double collector, so it doesn't really matter anymore. Uh, actually, it does get close here. Now that I'm thinking about it. Um, so he's blocked the land, so I used my tower to zip over this Iona that was double collecting for me here to produce another aggressive desert. So I get my 5-3. This is, this is a really sneaky line also. Um, I think the Windborn should go on right side, but um, I tuck the rune in behind the Iona, so now <laughs> he can't actually reach that 5-3. Poor guy. <laughs> Music has stopped.
In yours, you could have played around it, though. Yeah, could you have? We'll have to get to that, because I, I, I remember... I mean, yeah, you could have, like, blocked with creatures and such, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um... Yeah, so here he gets, like, a lot of stuff, but I was thinking I should put the 5-5 five five on this side, because the Runin was already there. Kind of difficult to break through. Um, he drops double Oak Father. <laughs> Quite sturdy. Um, so in this particular matchup, like yellow is favored, but you do have to know how to kind of play it out. Um, you want to save your mobility tricks for like the for like lethal lines or like just five hits, get it, sneaking in those five hits. The Iona helps a lot because she can just kind of sit here for the rest of the game and poke him for two. <laughs> Um, but here, I'm just going to block off his collections. We move the champion center so that I've actually got a, a decent attacking line. Um, but yeah, if champion had been on right side, I could have, like, moved the Oak Father out of the way. But yeah, I'm just going to save my movement tricks now for, like, lethal, lethal lines. Yeah, the block was great. Not only that, I had money and cards to fully remove your board. Oh, really? Yeah, that was that was such like a, a critical moment of the game. I feel like if if you had just like swung it just a little bit in your favor, then I think it would have just snowballed and you would have won that, and then the the series would have been like so different. Wait, is that a primeval class? Yeah, he's running. This is like a ramp list. He's very, very greedy. Primeval Colossus and Oak Father. I assume he's running the seed. Like, that seems like... Because this is right after the balance patch with the with the seed, but... Feeling pretty bad about the series. Aw, oh, sad. Yeah. It was, it was pretty brutal. Flyers can really... Steamroll. Um, so here... Uh, there's actually a lethal here, I think. This is where the lethal is, right? And I'm kind of just calculating it out in my head, so... See if you guys can spot it. I won't spoil. <laughs> actually, that's a pretty easy lethal. Falcon dive would be better than theft. Falcon dive? <laughs> Theft's pretty great, though. Um, so yeah, we sneak in the... Hit. So yeah, saving movement tricks pretty good against mono green because they can just like bunker down, get super defensive, and then if you blow all your movement tricks, then you lose your in kinda. <clears throat> Cause then you can falcon dive your Iona. Oh, true. <laughs> the healing can actually be kind of nice sometimes though, against like burn and husk players, because. Flyers often just needs that like tiny little bit of heal to sustain them, which Soul Drain does, but a little bit of extra. This hand is pretty OP. I think I keep the flash wind here. Let's skip ahead. Uh, yellow, pretty decent against blue, so I'm not too worried about this matchup. Um, blue, like, like, uh, blue has, like, kind of mid-range bodies, which really hurt into Flyers. Uh, he does find the Aurora, but that's okay. Oh, oh, this is a pre-Aurora, though. That's, like, more than fine. So, I'm gonna be able to just clear this with an Emperor's Command. Uh, and Flashwind. Pretty neat. Also can put the Manta Rider in double collection, so this is just game winning this turn. Um, he's got zero collectors. Ninja Toad doesn't even take away my double collection anymore. So yeah, that was just kind of pretty much game winning, so we won't really look at this one too much. Um, anything else interesting happen? 
Yeah, pretty much with that line, like, I, I set up double collections so early on in that game, like, it's really gonna be really difficult to come ahead on that. Barter is a disgusting card, hey, well. <laughs> yeah, barter is pretty disgusting. I decay why anyone brought blue when yellow flyers exist as a prime example of the matchup. Yeah, like, mono blue just has... Mono blue's really solid on the ladder, I feel, because it's got... It's it's a really solid deck. It's just that it's got so many bad matchups. Like there's just so many decks that just one up it. Like even green blue, I find like green blue is really good against um, mono blue as well. Um, okay, so this is cheese. I just insta ban the Krog because so I I was a bit worried about like running into you cheese if you had like Crassius and Krog because I was like. Uh, I don't have any counters to either of these. Um, but like since the nerf, I was thinking that like Crassius might be less prevalent. Like people wouldn't bring it as much. Um, so this is obviously Yellow Rush, and this is like Flyers. Um, so Rush, I've got the Beastmaster to fight. Um, and this is, I think I saw, I can't remember if I saw this on, like, stream where he was running, like, Green Rush. So I can't remember if I knew this was Green Rush or not. Um, but anyways, so, like, Mono Green's one that I want to save, and then I just start with Flyers. Why do I start with Flyers? I had the Eolus to kind of counter the, his Flyers, so I guess... My Flyers was just, like, a decent deck to start with. From your point of view, you ban blue. Because you want to Krog and Flyers are stronger anyway, so happy if you ban Krog. Then your list that is worthless is Yellow Rush, so you start that. Fair enough. Yeah, Yellow Rush is going to be really difficult against, like, all of those decks, I think. This was, yeah, I mean, the matches were, like, pretty significant. I drew really strong, also. Like, Manta Rider against Yellow Rush, that's really tough to deal with. And, and Bloatfly, actually. Um, it's just kind of an insane hand. <laughs> also Bloatfly. Yeah, like, this this hand is gross. And, like, Bloatfly against Rush, they can't even, they can't even do anything against that. Like... Two Faria 3-3s three are already insane, and then you just get an infinite supply of them. Um, and yeah, so... Uh, yeah, in this matchup, like, you just you just build... Because, yeah, you don't need the collection lands. So you build these defensive lands. Um, just hope that he doesn't get an aggressive desert spot. So you kind of want to just block these, but... Um, I mean, if you can channel his line of attack into only one line, it's pretty... It becomes pretty easy to win, especially with the Manta Riders and such. You were thinking about last nightmareing it? <laughs> it was a horrible, horrible nuisance. Um, I also, so I had the Ariana here, but this is like something I almost never want to play. I just play it there because I have the Faria, but yeah, so this is pretty much um, pretty easy win because now I just get to step on lands. Blood flies, yeah. That 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 opening hand was disgusting. So let's move on to the next one. This was like where the interesting stuff happened. It was very early on though. <laughs> but yeah, the yellow flyers mirror is. This is like a fifty-fifty, right? So. Um, I could easily lose from here or easily win. Uh, I I don't get a good hand, so I'm a little bit a little bit spooked. at the moment to spread the word. Oh, you have? You run choking. Oh, oh yeah, and rush. That makes sense. Just didn't draw it. Wear red. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. People, like, keep complaining about red being, like, underpowered. I think red's, like, very strong still. I just, I, I don't particularly run it usually, but um, thankfully Cheese doesn't really have much of a start either. I think he's got the Manta Rider. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, and then I top deck Mantra Rider, so uh, there is an option to put creatures both sides, but then I notice in my hand I have Celestial Tower plus Flashwind plus Bloodfly, which is pretty neat. So I, I don't. I also don't really want to send creatures into the Ariana. Ariana's a bit uh, like annoying to hit into. <laughs> So I put both of my creatures on left side, which might be kind of telling that I have the Celestial Terror maybe, but I mean, I don't know. I'd probably arrange my creatures this way anyways, right? Maybe. Um, Bloodfly just kind of wants to be there. So like the way to like kind of defend against this, I guess you can just drop a creature and then like my line doesn't really do much. You have one soul drain, two barter in hand. Oh, okay, so you can get like double soul drain. You could even like clear this probably. Uh, and the step up's just kind of icing on the cake. You can always clear it, yeah. This is just so much mobility though. Like. Is this even expected? I, I guess like tower just lets you do stuff like this. Um, this turn was disgusting though. So we get barter. I managed to find the soul drain. Pick the soul drain. I think, okay, it took me a minute to see it, but I've got the spirit theft in hand. So I get to nab a free Manta Rider here as well. That was super expected after the two on the same side, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, and then I got the value hit. Um, I was debating playing the Manta, but I mean I even have like Barter into Soul Drain into just drop the Bloatfly again, so Bloatfly is like super protected here. Um, since he's got no creatures on board anymore. Uh, but yeah, that like that was obviously very game winning. Um, I think he, he comes back a little bit. Finds the double soul. Oh wait, you. Wait, what happened? Did the corrupt guy stay alive? Oh, you run six spells. Oh, okay. Yeah, pretty lucky. I mean, I had two options to uh, two uh, opportunities to get it. So, oh, that yeah, you stole the blood fly. I had two opportunities to get it, and like the second soul drain wasn't as important. Uh, like I could have easily left the Ariana alive. But yeah, beautiful turn. <laughs> yeah. Um. And yeah, we just take the advantage from there. Um, I think the the next one, like, I think you ran out of cards, or like, you must have had a bad hand. I think you just kind of look at this. Oh, yeah, that was that. Yeah, that was a bit uh, unfortunate. Must have been a bit tired. Yeah, yeah, the. Bloodfly in range with tower on board. So you had to like use a flash win there and that really sucked. Uh, it was going to be tough from that point anyways, but yeah. Um, and then this one, I guess you just didn't find anything. I kind of had a god start this time too. I mean yellow into yellow into green, like mono green is also just kind of bleh. It was horrible. You saw it two times five two. Oh no! <laughs> and had at most ten HP on your green stuff. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. That was gonna be pretty brutal. Um, but that was finals, and I got oh, I got to show my fantasy card back now. I finally got it. So I was super happy that I won that at least. Um, that's my first seasonal cup win. Crushing this won't work. Yeah, yeah. The yellow flyers was such a good bring. I was like 
this was just kind of like a, oh, yellow flyers is pretty good. I'll bring that along. But it worked so well. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. I'm going to get into some uh, actual matches, but that'll be on a separate video. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's Runin Seasonal Cup. Thanks for watching.